Hi, Jeff Zwerink again. Welcome back to our show. We've got a great time to talk with one of our visiting scholars, uh, Sean Aish, AI technologist uh, working in the field. Just looking forward to our conversation today. How are you doing today, Sean? I'm doing great, Jeff. How are you? I am doing well. Uh, I, I find AI to be just a fascinating topic because... Uh, you know, I, all these dreams of, you know, C-3PO or Johnny Five, you know, creating sentient beings, if you will. And and it kind of makes me wonder, are people in this field thinking about the ethical issues arise? Because, you know, we talked in a previous episode about the double-edged nature of AI that it can be used for great benefit and great harm. Are people thinking about that from an ethical perspective? Uh, yes, Jeff, and a lot of people. So many of the top researchers uh, what you would call AI ethicists. This is their entire career. They have a PhD in AI ethics, and some of them work at companies like Google, Amazon, OpenAI, DeepMind, uh, all of these companies that are developing these sophisticated artificial intelligence systems, Jeff. They have eth the ethicists who are trained in this field, and so that is good news. Um, and what I would say, Jeff, you mentioned C-3PO, is that many of us, uh, if we watch enough sci-fi movies like iRobot or, or really any of them, the, the question in all the sci-fi movies is if we create a robot that, that behaves like a human, what are the ethical concerns? But in the issue of AI ethics, uh, Jeff, that's actually, that's not the focus. So initially when people were just imagining about AI, that was the focus, but many of the AI systems that affect your life and my life today whether it's self-driving cars or the recommender system that tells you what movies to watch on Netflix or the algorithms that are driving Twitter and Facebook and causing all this division in the country or image recognition technology. Um, these things, that's not artificial general intelligence, but it impacts all of our lives today. And so in the uh, history of AI ethics, there, there have been three waves. And what I would like to do, Jeff, is just read a quote for you from Carly Kind, She's a researcher at the Ada Lovelace Institute in the UK, and she has a great description of these three waves. She says the first wave was defined by principles and dominated by philosophers. So the first wave, in other words, Jeff, was theoretical. Mm -hmm. The prince of principles and philosophers, people who love to sit in their armchairs and think. And the second wave was dominated, led by computer scientists and geared towards technical fixes. So this first wave is philosophical. Mm -hmm. The second wave is the computer scientists who are actually jamming the keys, creating these AI algorithms. And then as they create them, asking them, you know, trying to fix the AI and say, wait, that doesn't look right. Mm -hmm. um, that's a little bit biased. So that's, that's going to harm this population. Let's try to fix it. So you had computer scientists who saw that an algorithm might be biased and then they were trying to fix it themselves. So maybe you didn't have a PhD level AI ethicist. It's just the guys hacking the code. Right. In the third wave of ethical AI, we, we have AI ethicists who's, who've influenced the field. Um, and we, we've seen a Dutch court shut down an algorithmic fraud detection system. Students in the UK take to the streets to protest against algorithmically decided exam results. So imagine if an algorithm decides who gets what ranking on a test. And you can see how that could result in some frustration and right. maybe some un unfairness, uh, not that humans aren't unfair in, in grading exams, but, and uh, we have US companies that are voluntarily restricting their sales of facial recognition technology. So Jeff, what a, 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 uh, Carly Kine's point is that we're seeing AI ethics hit the streets where companies and individuals are actually applying principles of ethical AI to say, hey, wait, we shouldn't use facial recognition, recognition technology this way because it could be abused. Or we shouldn't use AI to determine who gets what grade because maybe it'll treat someone very unfairly and you know they'll miss out. And so it's taking, this is her quote here, it's, it's taking us beyond the principled and the technical to practical mechanisms for rectifying power imbalances and achieving individual and societal justice. So I think that's a great way to think about um, kind of ethical AI as these three waves and how we've gone from the more theoretical to the practical. So it sounds like we have these two points that are being made. One that there's the sentient 3PO, C3PO, R2D2, Johnny Five type AI, that that's not what we're talking about. 
we're more talking about just these cool algorithms that do all sorts of things uh, day in and out, day in and day out that we use. But then there's also been this transition, as you were saying, from a kind of a philosophical, let's think about what these ideas are to actually putting boots on the ground. So why don't you, if you could give us an example where we've moved from the theoretical understanding of ethics down into, a, okay, here's what we're actually doing to implement something more practical, if you will. Thanks, Jeff. That's a that's a great question. And I'll just go back to what Carly kind her examples, because I think they're really brilliant. And so let's take the example of image recognition. So in, in the beginning, uh, you may have had these armchair philosophers, uh, they may have, in fact, been more interested in sentience. But they may have been writing some papers on, you know, if you can do facial recognition, what are the implications? Hmm. And Part of what we have to think about, Jeff, is that oftentimes with the technology, as been, has been pointed out by Neil Postman, we don't know how the technology is going to change society. Think about mm -hmm. iPhones. Think about the Internet. I mean, no one at the beginning really understood how that technology would shift the society. And so often what happens, Jeff, is the philosophers have some thoughts. But what happens is, is once the computer scientists or the technologists start implementing the technology, people start to realize there are issues they didn't expect. Mm -hmm. Right. And so with facial recognition, um, there may have been some philosophical talk about it, but certainly there were not companies implementing policies that would restrict sales of their facial recognition technology to, um, to let's say, uh, you know, uh, certain entities that might oppress other people. So <laughs> we've gone from, you know, facial recognition technology powered by IAI exists to we're not going to sell you this technology as a company. So this is not just a philosopher. This is a giant company saying, actually, we feel that ethically it's wrong to sell this facial recognition technology to certain people because it could be abused. And so that, Jeff, is kind of that transition. And uh, in the beginning, philosophers may not have even realized that was a significant issue. I don't know that for a fact, but that, mm -hmm. that's kind of the process that we're, we're talking about. So that raises kind of an interesting question, and this may be a little bit out your field, but I'm curious your thoughts on it. You know, you've got companies deciding, oh, I'm going to sell, not going to sell this to you, I'm going to sell this to you. At least historically in the United States, and you know, AI I think raises this dilemma because we're talking now globally, how do we deal with people? But you know, to be able to sell to one group of people and not the other, we've set a lot of our system of government up of not allowing you to discriminate against people. So do you have any sense as are, are ethicists thinking about kind of the discrimination and how does society work aspect in that? I know that's a little bit of a curveball, but I'm curious your thoughts on that. Yeah, Jeff. So I think the answer is uh, how will like how will the technology be used? So um, it, it is the is there a possibility that and and I have an example actually. So there was a chat bot created based on a a romantic robot in a movie that this this guy who lost his wife created to like replicate his wife and AI. And mm -hmm. so uh, a guy created a chat bot that was uh, like a, supposed to be a romantic partner. And then he made a public website where you could use this chat bot and you could customize it. So there was a man who had lost his fiance. He took all of her text messages, all of her Facebook messages. He uploaded them to this chat bot. And then he felt like he was chatting with his dead fiance. Mm -hmm. um, and so the, the company OpenAI uh, that, that, created this language model that this uh, this developer was using, found out about this website, Jeff, and they said, we need to talk to you. And they had a discussion with them and they said, if you want to keep this website up, you need to put some limitations on how much people can customize this because this could be used in a bad way. Hmm. The developer said, no, I'm not going to. And so the company pulled his access to the AI model. So the, the that website no longer exists. Uh, Jeff. So that's an example of how a company handled it. They approached the individual. They said, you're using our AI and we have a concern. This could be abused. And they, they asked him to set some boundaries. And when he didn't, they they pulled his access. 
Well, yeah, I appreciate your comment, Sean, because this is something you can just begin to see the there's a whole lot of downstream ramifications for this. Of do we want companies doing that? Should the government? Should individuals? But I love the discussion here, and I just really appreciate your comments. And you know, for those watching, I, I hope you've enjoyed our conversation here today. I would encourage you. If you want to hear more, go to reasons.org and uh, search for Sean H. That's S-E-A-N, last name O-E-S-C-H. You'll get access to a lot of resources that he's developed and allow you to dig deeper into these conversations and think, how do we use AI well, and how can we use this to benefit humanity?